The Bookshelf with Ryan Tuberty is brought to you by Eason, Ireland's favourite bookseller. Eason have a rich heritage of bookselling since 1886. In fact, it's probably where you got your first ever book or maybe your last one and hopefully your next one after you listen to this episode of our podcast. And stay listening for our Ryan Recommend slot, my weekly recommendation, where I'll discuss a book I've read recently that I think you'll really enjoy too. All the books we discuss on this episode of our podcast are available now in your local Eason store or indeed order online from Eason's.com before 6pm for same day dispatch with free delivery when you spend over a tenner. Eason, be inspired. Welcome to The Bookshelf with me, Ryan Tuberty, and a guest whose life story we're going to turn the pages over through the gaze of just three books that we've asked them to pluck from their very own bookshelf. Not just any old books, of course, you know the drill by now. There's a book from childhood, there's a book that changed their life, and there's a book that made them cry. My guest today is a renowned singer. She's a songwriter, an actress, an author who has captivated audiences worldwide. As the lead vocalist of a world-famous family band, she's brought us iconic hits that seamlessly blend, and I say this, I'm not just making it up, rock with traditional Irish themes, earning critical acclaim, a dedicated global fan base, and over 60 million record sales worldwide. worldwide. But her talents don't stop at music. She's also graced the stage and screen and production, such as The Boys from County Clare, and Jane Eyre. In addition, her beautiful memoir from 2019, Barefoot Pilgrimage, offers an intimate glimpse into her life, her career, and of course, the personal experiences that have shaped her artistry. And so, it is a great pleasure to welcome somebody who, for some reason, I get on very well with, <laughs> on and off the air. It's Andrea Kaur of The Kaurs. Welcome to The Bookshelf. Nice to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. What I, the reason I say we get on quite well, and I hope I'm not being too presumptuous, but there's, I think because your music is it gives a certain vibe, um, it belies a, a divilment that you have, uh, that, you know, you're a bit of a messer, to, to use expression. <laughs> and that, yeah, resonates it, with you. I, well, God knows why. Yeah. But, but there's a giddiness to you that I think that people wouldn't be aware of. or what, where, Where's that from? From? Is, was that from since you were a kid or like you, mm. I wouldn't like to sit beside you at the back of the class I think it'd be too much there'd be no great. work done <laughs> tell me about young well, you little you well uh, I was yeah there was a boldness and a giddiness yeah very giddy mum used to always say to me uh, you're very giddy and settle down and that was happening a lot yeah I think it probably the baby of the family you know life's a bit of a breeze <laughs> for quite a while I think when you're the youngest yeah, um, they've gone through all the oh very important life lessons that they must teach children along the way and just given up by the time the, the, the fourth has arrived. Yeah. And yeah, I was I was pretty much left to my giddy devices. So you had the run of the place in some kind ways. Kind of in yeah. ways, yeah. Always tough on the eldest then to watch the freedom the youngest gets and thinking, why didn't I get any <laughs> Yeah. Did that happen in your case? Well, I mean, Jim was the eldest and is the eldest and he's 10 years older than me. Yeah. So I think at that point he's not you know, longing to be, he's not, he's not even probably quite aware of me, I think. Have you met Jim? I have. He's more than aware of me now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Okay, let's talk about um, what it was like in your house, because obviously music was just the thing. Yeah. Um, but where did books feature? Were there shelves? Was there, oh, yes. were there readers around you? Tell me about that. Yeah, well, dad, dad was loved, loved reading and books. And he had be- beautiful sets of books. I remember D.H. Lawrence and Charles Dickens and beautiful collections. Um, still there, actually. He was, he particularly loved it. Um that's a and, and he was, and he wrote. You know, he wrote poetry as well. So yeah. he was. It was very much there. Um, Did, would he? Would he have sat and read, and you'd be kind of all around the place, or you know, was he an active reader? Does that make sense? It, yeah, you know, I rarely, I didn't really see that so much. He was out at work and stuff like that, but the books were there, and I knew, and he knew them, and he would be able to help you with English and yeah. whatever. But. Um, Obviously, he 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 was religious about the Irish Times. <laughs> was that that kind of reading? Um, but yeah, I I actually maybe if we went on holidays, would I see him with a book? Like yes, but I suppose there was rarely time to do that. But yet he 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 clearly was a voracious reader. If he's had all these collections of yeah. books around the place, I mean, yeah. he must have been a committed. Bookman. Yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. And then, as kids, were you read to, or did you did you choose to read yourselves? In um, I don't actually remember being read do to. You know? It's so funny how life is, isn't it? Mm. That how much we do with our children, and you look back and you go, "I had a great 
lovely childhood. Mum loved me, but never read yeah. to me. <laughs> um, Can I ask you, is it emotional talking to you about, about your dad and books? Uh, uh, let's see. It's emotional. Um, it can be emotional going back into that world yeah. and into that house in, in my mind. Um, can I can I ask you why that is, or, or what what if, what 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 effect does it have on your on the brain when you go through the the rooms in your head? I suppose it's the it's the bringing them back to life. It's the it's the probably the sense of transient of some of that moment being so alive, the house being so alive, and then to now these being memories and yeah. ghosts almost. You know yes. that that I think is. Uh, that's that's what it is, but it's not. I mean, I suppose that the memoir I wrote very much um, confidently walked into those rooms in 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 the hope of 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 reliving and and getting that sense and feeling back again. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you achieve that? I did achieve it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Your your how old was your dad when he died? He was eighty two. Yeah. So that's you know it was it was a good age and I think and the, and his passing was a pretty blessed passing you know mm. we got to say goodbye, mm. um, and I feel you know a sense of his work was done you know. Oh, what a his, nice thing to be able to say. His time here you know and he was a good man had a good life and and mm. was great fun great sense of humor very though great integrity, um, and yeah an honorable man and somebody to be you know. Very, like yeah, a, a, a life well lived. Someone I believe to be, to be looked up to yeah. and uh, and yeah. to take pages from the book of his own life. Of his own life, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Your, uh, tell me about your mom then. Growing up, how was she with you guys? I mean, she had her work cut out for her. She did. Yeah. Uh, she did. I mean, she she got married. I think when she had Jim when she was twenty two, maybe. Uh, but then that was how that it was, was back thing. then. Yeah, got married at twenty one. Um, uh, yeah, she had. Def- definitely had her work cut out for her, but she was a wonderful mum and she was uh, full of appreciation for the moment and um, a, a great laugh as well and, and 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 joyous as well. I mean, if she laughed, the tears would come down her face. And yeah. It was, it was um, um, and you know, often, often we made her laugh. <laughs> I'm getting the sense that the, so the giddiness is a maternal gene. Well, there's, in there's some a ways. thing, there is, and both of me, you and I have shared this moment. I think you have this one. This probably might be another thing that kind of Go on. unites us is um, when, you know, there's situations when you're not supposed to laugh. <laughs> we won't say where. No, or, we won't or why, say where. But, you know, there was a church involved, and, you know. <laughs> the, the, the bottom line is. If you're told not to press the red button, you and I are looking yes, at it going. Just please get me away. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> get me away from it. Don't let me, don't let me be in the same room or city as the red button. No, it's not good. So no. don't laugh in church. Well, equals it was you basically because oh. you said something about which I now can't hear it. And it is there's there's certain words in this in the vocabulary of today that just get to me right <laughs> and. One of them was clearly, obviously, got to you as well when the when the priest said, "I'm just going to do a little housekeeping first. and uh, you started talking about him coming out with a sweeping brush and stuff, because that is what housekeeping is. I had visions of the priest as Freddie Mercury in <laughs> "I Want to Break Free." Yeah, that's even better. Which could have been his weekend peccadillo. <laughs> it could have been. You never know. But that started the real us off. housekeeping. But that started us off. Yeah. So that that was that was it. The housekeeping. Anyway, and it went on. But mum had that, you know, mum was, and it was me, I, I'd make her probably laugh a lot in, in situations she shouldn't laugh. Yeah. yeah. I, well, you were into kind of that dark humour thing. And, <laughs> and I think that it's, it, there's a whole other podcast I'd love to do, you know, about about dark humour, because it is it's arguably the funniest. But um, I don't think... But that, also, it's, I think it's important to freeze us from, from, yeah. it, from a really painful moments sometimes <laughs> but you're right <laughs> yeah it do, it does it it, it you're, you, some of the funniest moments are found in the darkest corners and that's the reason and i think it's the reason why we, we, humankind are made that like humor is so important yes so it helps us get through and yeah sometimes we laugh the hardest at the roughest of times although with that in mind i think it's become a little more like um silk stockings and chocolate during world war 2 it's harder to find because you, you know it's kind of illicit now to be that dark of humour. It's becoming a little less... It is, but nobody, nobody can censor your mind. <laughs> Yourself, just, you just don't let it out. 
Gosh, we've, are we doing your autobiography title already? <laughs> we, got, we haven't even done the first book yet. Nobody can censor your mind. Nobody can censor your mind by Andrea yes. Corr. <laughs> it's 12 and three quarters. Don't even try. How many instruments do, were you playing by the age of 16, would you say? Oh, oh, just, uh, just two, two. Piano and uh, tin whistle. And how many can you play now? Uh, three. <laughs> piano, tin whistle and ukulele. Oh, come on, the baron. No, no, yeah. no, that's Caroline. She's very No, good. but I, 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 I'm actually not believing this. Oh, are you one of these people that calls spoons an instrument? Maybe that's... <laughs> that's why. Or the table. I can play the table. Okay, okay. I can play the fool, uh, but uh, I'm not going to do <laughs> it. got that down. Uh, <laughs> Touché. God. Okay, so at least we're getting all the emotional housekeeping done before we get into the book. The point I'm making, okay, so that's disappointing and slightly underwhelming. I thought you were much more talented. Um, <laughs> let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about the, uh, so you've got all the instruments mm. and all the music. Mm. So where's the books? The I, books are I, growing there. Growing up, are you, were you reading as well? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I loved it. And um, I mean, I suppose if we're, um, like we, well, let me see, how would I start? How, yeah. Are there books that you remember? I suppose when you think about you, you gave this these you know book from this book from that. Yeah, the three I think sections. you could really, you know, you could do this many times over with different books. Really, yeah. don't you feel that? I agree. I agree. So you know, I fe- felt when I looked at the questions that I or the what was asked of me to just go with what immediately came into my head. Yeah. So I did, and one was, and I do very much remember reading a lot in Scaries where we would go for a, a holiday. We'd go for a holiday in July every year. I thought the sun always shone there, by the way. That's... Daddy brought us in winter once and I realised it doesn't. <laughs> um, but, uh, and we'd have a chalet and there was this, this stack of old beds in a, in a room, just like mattresses. And I'd go up to the top of them yeah. and, and, you know, and read up there. And mum jo- mom joined the uh, library in Scaries. Great. Which was lovely. So we'd go there and get the books, and then that was that was the one that came into my mind when I remembered uh, Prince Caspian and the silver chair. And <gasps> is this your ch- from Lewis. childhood? It Are you is. bringing I, us I'm, there? I'm moving us on. I, I don't know I, why. You, well, because you're 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 bossing. Um, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> the, your, the book from your childhood is it's it's C.S. Lewis uh, of uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe mm-hmm. fame. And uh, tell us about the book you picked. Well, <clears throat> I remember. I just remember I, of all of the Narnia books, this one was my favourite and um, the silver chair and it begins with what I what I remember of it. You see, the thing is, I think loving books is loving the whole lot of it, loving the smell, loving the yes. paper and I remember the book and I remember the library thing. I remember all of that. I think it's so, the physical beauty of, of that and then somebody's ideas on pages is just so beautiful. Yes. And even when they're gone, that you have that forever. Um so anyway, this book, what I remembered really is these, these, the children at the beginning of it being, you know, they're bullied in school and they, they need, they, they, um, they want out of the miserable situation they're in. And so they escape and uh, escape to, to Narnia and yeah. find themselves in, in, you know, um, adventure and quests and, uh, you know, friendship and courage and all of those Bravery, bravery and, uh, and dignity yeah. and uh, yeah. loyalty and so yeah. many life lessons in, mm-hmm. in, in Narnia. I, I, I would never ask my friends here what the guest books are <clears throat> before I meet you. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to see, that. not surprised, but I didn't know you were going to pick Narnia. Did you really no, not? No, no, because I like to have a normal conversation rather than going, yes, well, actually, I read it last night. And it's great. Um, okay. And so I'm really happy to hear That's you. That's great. Because last night we watched The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. That's really I had no idea you were picking Narnia, and I was watching it and rethinking about it. Of course, C.S. Lewis was quite a Catholic person, and Aslan's very yeah. Jesusy, yes, uh, to use the verb. Or, mm-hmm. uh, and um, he, uh, you know, it's all about that, and he dies, and he comes back to. You know, it's mm. it's quite a religious experience is, yeah. as a book. Do you did you see it like that, or did you just see it as kids fighting with witches? I didn't see it then like that, but then I, I obviously, as the years go on, I, I do, you know, yeah. Which is quite, quite, quite something. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is an allegory, it is isn't it? It is beautiful. Yeah. Yes, it really is beautiful. And it's, it's, um, it's, the, the lessons are, are eternal yeah. and profound. I thought the magic, it was beautiful. The idea of the wardrobe <clears throat> and the fur yeah. coats. Yeah. And then, then seeing like a branch 
with snow. Yeah. I said, oh, wow. Yes. It's kind of got that uh, Oz and Kansas thing, you know, mm. the Technicolor black and white. And then out they go. It's just such a beautiful um, postcard to imagination. Yes. And also then, the, the also, I suppose, the metaphor even of opening a book, you also yeah. are transported. You're in. Do you know what I mean? You're going into a wardrobe of sorts. A lot of guests on this uh, podcast talk about escape. Did you did you use books as a kid as an escape portal, or you know, did you need them, or were they just fun to read? No, I I I, I think I did. Um, I I I did have a happy childhood. Yeah. Um, school good. <clears throat> school was good, but I did have you know at the same time. Nobody is you know. I suppose this is how I think. I think I got to twelve, which is very which is, I think is a blessed existence without ever having that worry ache. Yeah. Um, describe the worry ache because I, I think we know what you're talking about, but just yeah. describe it. Okay, well, that, that pain in your gut, in your gut, that ache that you just are, so, we only know it when you have it, that you were free of it <laughs> before. Um, so there's kind of before and after. Sure. And I suppose maybe because Caroline was a year older than me, she did a lot of the worrying for me. So I was just a state of bliss, basically. Mm. Then, you know, at 12, you get, you know, you're getting older and, and, you know, different problems with people or friends or, you know, when you, uh, so I suppose I, I, you know, I think like every, everybody had a bit of a hard time and in, in some ways and, yeah. um, and yes, I definitely would escape if I could into, Were you into ever the bullied world of books. As a kid? And I, I think I look back on it. I yes, I, there was a small, there was a small moment, but I suppose that's when that that ache the came. Ache. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I look back on it and the girls, and it really, you know, obviously, you really don't carry around resentment, and it was just something they made up something to stop me from going somewhere they didn't want me to go, and said people were calling me names, so I shouldn't go there, and I totally believed them, thanked them for telling me. <laughs> And then when I found and stopped going and my sister Caroline noticed something was wrong with me, but with the, the what they'd said was being called, I was being called was really harsh and horrible and, and made me ashamed, um, even though, you know, it was it was not true. Um, so I didn't even tell Caroline, who was my closest ally, but she noticed something was wrong with me and I wasn't going to this particular place. And I said, and so uh, I then started to cry and let it out. And she happened to be with her friend that went to this place yeah. and said, "That's I, I was there yesterday. That's, that's absolutely not true. It's not happening. Oh, boy. But I, I, it, it, I had believed it so fully that it never kind of left as it actually was untrue. Like it's suddenly being lifted off. Didn't, it didn't lift off. Do you know what I mean? The, yeah. the, uh, the residual. The residual. I, I still believed it. Yes. You know, um, and I mean, it was it was well done. They even got their, their brother, one of their brothers, to get on the phone and tell me that this was I was being called these names, and I wouldn't go there if I if I were you. You know what? It's like you're on that cusp of you know teenage, and I think that I think it was something silly like boys they fancied happened to look my way, and you know, so it was better to keep me away or whatever. Yeah, and and. Again, I say, I suppose it's just, I'm not sitting here crying, going, poor me, because there's... No. Do you know when you see people, actually, I saw this recently, <laughs> people way in their, like, 60s yes. that go, there's one I'm thinking of in particular, I saw a thing, but going, going, you know, to you that said I would amount to nothing and put me through hell. Thank you. You really hope you're beyond that in the 60s, <laughs> don't you? Really? God, I hope I was But yet, yeah, here you are. Uh, and yet, here I am. And here you are. But uh, with a very visceral memory. I yeah. mean, you did bring us into your, your world there for a second. I was very much part of your story. I was watching through the window of your childhood. Mm. I was thinking, crikey, you're, it's, it, it's, it's there. Yeah. It, you know, even though you've travelled a, a few miles from that time mm. in your life. And it's funny, isn't it, how impressionable you are. But... That one is yeah. That that description of the the what you call it the pain the the ache the pain and the ache the worry the, ache the worry ache is horrible yeah. Um, and that lovely way you've described how when you get to twelve or eleven you hope that you get that far yeah before be... being contaminated by adulthood or the mm. or, or anything close to it yeah. And you you had a good streak a really good streak and yeah. and now you're a mum yeah. Um, in the digital age. 
Yes. And you must wonder, do those kids, not just your kids, obviously, any kid, get further than seven or eight anymore? I know. I wonder. Do you, did that ever cross your mind? You know, it, it definitely crosses my mind, yes, particularly because because I am aware that that was quite a long time to go around feeling like that. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I do, it does cross my mind and I look at my own kids you know, it's quite funny you look at your own kids, though. I see them as much stronger than me, particularly my daughter. Great. She'd have none of this crap I took. <laughs> She'd she, she have wouldn't none take of it. Would she not? She, she is so, I'm like, I'm, I'm like inflicted with like people pleasing. So it's literally, yeah. it's, it's, it's really not something I, I like in myself. Um, I'm not pleasing myself with it anyway. Um, but she absolutely doesn't. In, in fact, like I, I witnessed her do something one day, and I just went, "This is so great." She's she yeah. doesn't she's not she doesn't have my yes my weaknesses. Um, we were like at a at a beach, and anyway, there was there was water park and all those um, you know the bouncy things to <laughs> bounce along and all this. Anyway, there's yeah. a queue with kids for it. Anyway, anyway, uh, I saw this quite big boy going by crying to his mum. A little bit, you know, and then and then Jeannie came up to me. I was sitting away from it, and Jeannie came up to me and go, and she goes, "Mum," uh, and she goes that this this boy came along and he was much bigger than her, and he was he went in front of her in the queue. She goes, "Excuse me, I was I was there," yeah. and he goes, "Well, you're not now," and anyway, and stayed there, and she she goes, so um, she pushed him in. Oh. <laughs> Did she? I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Yeah, neither was I. But like, I was secretly thrilled going, that would, I would be like going okay to the back. Uh, yeah. I'd go back, to, I'd just go behind him and, you know, wow. I loved that spirit. That's, yeah, that yeah. spirit is, yeah. is, 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 is that, that means there's less minding in her. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So exactly. So I don't really own. worry about, that's a, a great I thing. So like, I don't worry about yeah. the ache really for her. I think she, like of course she'll have her problems and everybody has well everybody has to go through stuff yeah but um, I think she's she's got a good foundation I love of that. strength you're a people pleaser self described but why I think there's a shyness there too are you, are you a little introverted as well um, I, I, I don't, am I I, I I'm not quite sure I, I'm trying to figure out like I mean I know that you're you're you're, you're outgoing but I wouldn't call you necessarily an extrovert um, you yeah. know, people pleaser, and yet as we're talking, you know, I'm sure you'd rather be somewhere else. But at the same time, I'm I'm just trying to figure you out in in that in that. You, I wouldn't rather be somewhere else. Oh, well, that's okay. Well, thank you. I wasn't fishing for that, but but I <laughs> no, just, I know. But, uh, I'm but very I appreciate happy that. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll take that as a vote yes. of confidence. Uh, says he. Now who's now who's worried about his confidence? Uh, <laughs> this is, I'm doubling down here. Um, but you know, you you are you have you are confident then, are you? I'm, you know, I'm 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 confident. I, I I know I know what I can do, and I know you know I I feel I also feel I know my limits as well, and okay. I you know I feel I. I feel pretty self-aware at this point. I suppose you you seem to say people pleaser as a negative. It is a negative. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Well, I think it is a negative. Well, there's a pair of us in it, so well, I'm, 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 I'm speaking was, your language here. I suppose if I was, yeah, I suppose if you were like <laughs> doing anything but please people, that would be a real negative as well. I mean, you know, like uh, Ricky Gervais in that program. He just goes around and is horrible to everybody <laughs> at all times. Yeah, afterlife. Afterlife. Yeah, afterlife. Awake. That's the There one. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Where he's just exactly a, a misanthrope. Where he's all the all the yeah all the bad thoughts they're coming out. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of anger, and it was very funny. Back it's to our very darkness. Funny. Tell me about uh, before we leave the kids' books yes. and childhood books. Are you reading to your own? Are they beyond that? And are they? Were you a, a, like a yeah. reading mother? Yeah, or a reading father at home? Was I did one, read. Did yeah, I did read them, and you Can know, I, ask I you about what sort of books you I reading? looked forward to having them, yes. so I could read them. Oh, did oh right, okay. Do you know what I mean? I so do know what you mean. Now you'll have that exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, what sort of books did you like to read to them, or did they like to have read to them? Were there any jumping out at you? Was I mean, were you into the Gruffalo, or was it? Do you know what is a wonderful book? Uh, I think it's such a great book, even for, and and for adults, but it's kids one. I think it's Neil Gaiman or something. Yeah, Neil Gaiman. The Graveyard yeah. Book. I haven't read it. Oh, so good. Is it? Read it. I don't know. Do you have a child going around to read it to even? I yeah. hope not. I mean, what? <laughs> you don't. 
<laughs> no. Well, here we go. Do, uh, I mean, my, my, my children are now human yes. adult women. Yeah, well, listen, I don't <laughs> but, know. But, but you just said something that was real nice. I think sometimes adults can read a kid's book. Oh, and, definitely. And I think they could because, again, this is, yeah, no, it is a beautiful book. Tell me about book. this, the graveyard book. Graveyard book. Oh. Can you? And a person, and nobody, because he's he's called nobody because he has nobody. Oh. Um, hey, kids, gather around! <laughs> no, as well, it's that dark thing, the graveyard. No, I love book. it. I love it already. But the spirits around it, it's beautiful. Okay, it's beautiful, and and yeah. I was saying, oh, like the Gruffalo. Hey, kids, you're I like know, no, the graveyard. No, the graveyard. <laughs> it sounds lovely. I mean. <laughs> It does actually. No, I like that. It's kind of Tim Burton sort of vibes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. He'd do a good job of it. I yeah. like that. Let's go to the next book. And I'm, I'm not going to go to the book that made you cry, given where we went with uh, the childhood book. Yeah, I'm going to go for the book that changed your life, if you don't mind, because okay. um, what I find when I play this game, the books, this bookshelf game with friends sometimes over yeah. a pint or whatever, saying, what would you pick? What would you pick? Mm. And it's really intriguing. And everyone has a kind of um, they, they often say, well, if you asked me in six months or if you asked me a year ago, I would have picked very different books. Absolutely. And also it's quite hard uh, to pick the one. Anyway, uh, the life-changing book. I know we've spoken before about reading and you're, you you like a self-help book on occasion or a soulful book or a guide book in, in for the soul. Or the, is, that, is that fair to say? I mean, you... Yeah. I um, mean, I, I, I like what I mostly what I like to do in the morning is is first of all, read some kind of spiritual book and, right. and then read the novel I'm reading. So I I have a obviously a chapter or something kind of that was that's more spiritual. Yeah, and where yeah. does that bring you for, for in the morning? Is it is it just for a bit of zen? It's or lovely in the is morning. It, is it really first thing in the morning? It's a beautiful thing. How to long do. how long does it take? Because I mean my I don't know if I'd have the patience. I'd be like, well, what's happening next? So how long do you give it? Fifteen minutes, half an hour? No, I I sit down. I'd get get my tea or coffee, yeah. or whatever coffee, um, and read the spiritual one first. Yeah. So that would be be what would that be like the chapter? So maybe. Lovely. 10 minutes and then I'd go and get more coffee and then do that. Mm. And in the meantime, the kids will get up and different things. But then I'd go on to my novel after it. I love so this. I don't know, it's kind of the morning time. It'd be probably spread in between yeah. getting up and down and making lunches and stuff. Okay, and how do you decide, and we'll get to your the life changer in mm. a moment, how do you decide on the spiritual books, to, how to pick them? Do you do you read reviews in the magazines or do friends suggest them to you or is it a combination? Of it all can be a combination, yeah, yeah, along the way. I mean, I love Eckhart Tolle and yeah. and and Deepak Chopra and yes. and yeah. Okay, what do these books do for you for your for your head and your heart and your soul? Um, again, what all of them do, and I spoke to you before about Thomas Merton. You and did. I love him. Yeah. Um, what do they do for me? Yeah. They they let me. They give me an awareness that I am a soul journeying in a body. Mm. Um, it gives me an appreciation of life and of the moment and it helps me to look on the world as it's like more of a realm rather than reality. Okay. Um, but, and that there's more. Great. It gives me that sense of... of um, Purpose, maybe? Of, of like, it kind of goes along with what I said about Dad, his work was done, that we mm. are here to do something. Yes. And everybody's individual, right? But it gives me that sense of um, almost um, <clears throat> liberation in that in that if I trust and have faith, I will continue to be guided. Yes. Um, I, that's, I don't know how to... No, no, this, you're, 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 trying. You're, you're absolutely... You're describing something that I'm not that familiar with being honest with you, but I'm getting a sense of it. I think you described it beautifully when you talked about your dad hitting 82 mm. and deciding, or at least the world deciding, okay, it's time to say goodbye to dad. And, and for you to be able to say life fulfilled, uh, yeah. lovely legacy and, mm. and all this sort of thing. And I think you probably would love to be heading in, in that direction, or if, if you want to call it that. Um, are you religious? I mean, are you Catholic? Is it Catholic faith? Yes, is no, it strong... I'm, I'm Catholic, yes. Yeah, and would you go to Mass and yes, uh, yeah. regularly and do, yeah. do all that sort of thing? Yeah, okay. I, I really believe, yeah. Can I ask you about your bracelet? Ah, that's... Um, I noticed you're wearing... Somebody gave it to me from Medjugorje. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and there's a picture, there's a little, little medal of yes, uh, the Virgin that Mary. Is, no, who that's, is it, sorry? that's the little flower, that's Therese. Therese Lisieux, Sint yeah. the, the saint. Who I, I prayed for my... Uh, to you know, when I was having problems having the children, yes, having having my children, yes, um, I prayed and prayed. To I her. didn't. I didn't know you had problems having your children. You know, having your children. Yeah. Um, and 
prayer obviously got you where you needed to be. Yeah. How 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 did that? How, how much did you like? Did you find yourself going? How did you decide it was her to pray to? How did you decide this is going to have to help you as much as medicine or science? That was interesting because I I was in France at the time in Saint Jean and there's a church there mm. that is, I think, well there's a beautiful statue of her there, and the flowers and then I read about her, and it's so beautiful her story, like she's just she was such a Beautiful, you feel beautiful free to, saint, to, to, to right? Talk and a about beautiful it. person, beautiful soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of her things that she would say was, "Give, give always, without being aware of the consequences." Nice, right? So everything is is such humility and selfless. And she would see beauty in like pots and pans, even. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and that yeah. in everything like that, and just a, be- a really beautiful soul. Um, and uh, actually, I think it's the end of her novena at the moment. But anyway, okay. um, so, so you, you prayed hard to her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's remarkable. I, I mean, when you eventually were in a position position to have kids and you yeah. had them, did you attribute that to her? I do. I was because that, because my situation was was not good. I had I had five miscarriages and it didn't look good that I'd I'd be able to hold my own baby. Yeah. Um. And so it was it, in in not without getting into anything medical, but it was it it was almost miraculous how 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 my problems disappeared in a way. Now I'm not saying <laughs> I like you know there's something if if I don't understand that egotistical, but I believe prayer and faith and trust, and in a certain way handing it over and going I trust what's best will happen for me that that I, I'm looked after. Um, and and I have faith and trust is very liberating when you know you've no control yourself, which is which is a great thing to have no control. <laughs> I, I spoke to um, I think it was it was Vogue, and I asked her about faith in terms of she's obsessed with old people and things like that. And she said, I I want to have faith so that I know that, for example, I'll meet my children again or my parents mm. again mm. in the next part of. The, do you do you believe that you, you 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 there's heaven and hell or that that you will be seeing your father and your mother? Your, I believe I'll be with their 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 I've got with their soul. Yeah, I believe I absolutely believe we'll be reunited. Yeah, that must be very reassuring. Yes, it is. You know, it makes me happy. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, well, you're grinning like it's uh, <laughs> like it's good news. You know, it's good news. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Let's get to the book that changed your life then. Tell me the the name and the author and the, the nature yeah. of it, if you wouldn't mind. So it is The Untethered Soul, which is uh, by Michael A. Singer. And to let people know who can't see it, um, if they're just listening to the podcast, this is a book that has been <laughs> read over and over. I, I mean, I love this. I mean, if this was a cookbook, I wouldn't be able to see it for flour and egg. <laughs> you might still have flour and egg on this one as Talk well. Talk to me about it. It's, 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 gosh, this is a well-loved book. It is a well-loved book. Um, and it was given to me by a friend. Yeah. Um, uh, so let me tell you. So again, it is like what we were talking about. You see, if Deepak Chopra says there... Read this and you'll get more. Read this carefully and you will get more than a glimpse of eternity. Wow. Again, it is a really liberating book I found. Also, you know, well, oh, there's just so much to it. Okay. But again, it is, it's that thing of, of that awareness of the soul traveling in the body. Um, um, let me see. Th- certain things about our we, the way we are as human beings, like like restricting our our view and our perception and our 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 love and our you know and and they can often be ourselves. Like at the beginning of it, he talks about the inner roommate or the yeah. person that just keeps going on in your head. And actually, he says, if you go and have a shower and just listen, right, to, to what you are saying to yourself. Oh God, no! I must do that later. I know, let this and let, and this then the then you cha- imagine the, this inner yeah. roommate can often be very negative. Yeah, the chattering chimp. Oh, you're not chimp. going to do yeah. well with that. Oh, you're, yeah, exactly. The chimp. Did you read that one as well? No, somebody called it the, like the chattering chimp or something. That, but that's a book, the chimp, the chimp paradox, which is brilliant. That, that's what it is. And it's the monkey inside your head jumping exactly. up and down, saying, "No, you're terrible at that. You're terrible at that. Don't do yeah. that. Don't turn left. Turn right. Just go." Yeah. Would you just yeah stop yeah. talking? 
Is that that one? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's. I like don't know that. what you're talking about. Again, it's just about it's about telling you to or advising you to yeah. actually with that just be aware of it. Just to actually go like you are. Who are you? Basically, it's as asking those questions. That really big question. Who are you? Right. Yeah. You're not Ryan Tuberty. You know that's not who you are. Yes. You're not. You know. Andre Corr. You you were who you always were. You're the you who you were when you were ten and who you are now and who you are. You know, there's yeah. that soul that's always there. That is the essence of you. you you've talked about Andre. You've talked about reading a lot of spiritual books in the morning time before mm. you hit your novel or what have you. Um, why this one of all of them? Why that? Why, one? why did this change your because life? Or I was felt it? it was. I read it and it wasn't long after my dad died. Yeah, and. Um, I suppose I at those moments you're you're aware of your own mortality. You're seeking uh, comfort mm. as well. Big time. For in in times of grief, so you know, you find the book. The book finds you. Yeah. And I feel that I do remember when I got to the end of it, lying back and going, and just smiling, going, "It's all okay." Wow, what a what an endorsement for a book. Yeah. Especially if you're going to that awful grief yeah to, to be able to smile Absolutely. and say he's okay I'm okay we're all, all okay it's all okay wow yeah The Untethered Soul by mm. Michael A. Singer yeah she's nearly brought me over to the the light side <laughs> uh, I might nearly read something like that now um, you should shall we move to the book that made you cry I, I do ask the question about crying um, are you are you are you a crier are you you know what what makes you cry mostly is it in terms of the arts, for example, is it a song you hear or is it a movie you're watching? Is it a play you'll see yeah. or is it a book you'll read? And that, oh, in, th- in those terms, yeah, those it, can, terms. it can be, it can be all of them. Can it? Um, yeah. Are you uh, quick to tear? Um, yeah, I, I, um, is it quick? I feel it can come upon me suddenly. Did yeah. more and more that it's. So maybe that is quick. I think it can it can surprise me. So you're ambushed by crying. Slightly by ambush, yeah. Sometimes with certain certain like as you say, these works of art, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um The one that I'm gonna show or, or human beings performing like yeah. in it to their like out of their skin. Yeah. That type of thing. When yeah. you see somebody just really fly. Yeah. It's it's that's a very emotional thing. It's like passion. and you can see it when you see it you can, when you read it in a book when their words are flying mm. when the whole thing is airborne and it's 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 same same if you go to a theatre and you see that like I saw Andrew Scott play Hamlet and I I was supposed to meet somebody afterwards I couldn't I couldn't do it. Is that I was, the, on the West End in London? Yeah, I saw that too. It was outrageous. It was outrageous. It was so good. It was about three hours long and yeah. he was on stage for nearly most of it. I mean he he really broke my heart I felt I absolutely was in a state after it <laughs> that's one that was one but again it's watching a human being yeah excel it just transcend themselves like fly above themselves somehow amazing I, I, I was brought to tear very recently by um, there's a song called Real Love by the Beatles I love it you know the one yeah and it was the one that was found in the anthology is it the one love is real or is it no it's real no, love yeah that one yeah yeah one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and it was the one they found John Lennon on tape I so love it's it. very plaintive and very raw yeah and then the Beatles is played around him but then a guy called Tom O'Dell did a version of it oh yeah and it's so so I know who that is do you da, know da, da, da. he did that, that piano one yes exactly yes, yeah, that's yeah. the guy so he does real love and, he, and his diction is, is so beautiful in it. Yeah. And it's, and I and I actually can't listen to it because it's just too much. Because mm. it reminds me of my girls being little and Christmas uh, and uh, toys really? and innocence. Yeah. And now they're like spectacular women. No, it's an awareness of time passing. But I was happy to know that I could still be moved. <laughs> <laughs> you I thought old, it was knocked out of you me. Old, <laughs> you like, old, you old of stone, crabby I'll statue. Get a tear, I'll get a tear out of you yet. But it is good to be moved, is what I'm trying to say, by yeah. a song, a book, mm. um, a performance. Yeah. Let's go to a book. What book are you going to for? To a book. So again, the major cry there's, in core. there's been a few, but um, I this one, again, when I, this list of things, it, it came to mind immediately because I was in, I was in, Los Angeles, I was out by a pool on a break from having doing, you know, we were working. And I, yeah, and I was reading The Kite Runner by Khaled Husseini. Yeah. 
And not well. I had to leave. I started to sob. There's just this scene that is so that I I felt so immersed in, um, and an awful violent attack that somebody that that a friend, a twelve year watches. He he, the he betrays somebody that couldn't love him more. Yeah. You know. It's really, again, there's always, I suppose there's always a Christ-like thing in, in a lot of, most yeah. stories. But you think of Peter. But, um, yes. the or denying, denying, yes. denying, denying, denying somebody. Um, it was more the denial, actually. And this, this, he has this, so there's a best friend. But again, it's like, he at the best friend at the same time is a, is a servant to him. Yes. And so again, it's that thing as well that like none of us, are better than anybody and nobody's better than us. So the kite the kite runner is we're in Afghanistan. Yes. 1972 young boys. Yeah. And kite running is a thing they do. It's yes. like it's a national sport or yeah. pastime, isn't that right? And, yeah. And these two boys were like classic Cain and Abel or you yeah. know, just two boys, childhood friends mm. for life, uh, you yeah. would think. And then uh, what where, where does it go from You'd, there? Yeah, yeah. Um they they one of them were like such loyalty and a faithful friend, like just yeah, he would say, for you, a thousand times over. He'd say this to his friend. Anyway, the friend runs, and his name is Hassan, right? Yes. So there's Hassan and Amir. Amir is the wealthy one. Hassan's the servant. But they're like brothers, really. Yes. Um, and anyway, Hassan runs the kite when at the end for for, for him. And um, he's attacked by, by these bullies, really horrific bullies, and, and assaulted. And... His friend sees him and does nothing, doesn't intervene, watches it. And then, because he can't live with the guilt of it, he wants to just get rid of the boy from his life. So he sets him up yeah. um, as, as like that he, that he stole. Just to get Like it's out. just a compounding the betrayal and thing. But also you feel what he... He was only a 12-year-old boy when he did this himself, you know, when he, when he did deny his friend. Um, but... His whole life, there's the shadow of that of that deed and betrayal that you know influenced his, his and coloured his life. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh. You can't escape. I'm thinking of that Johnny Cash song, "Run On." You can run on. Uh, you yeah. know, you can run on for a long time. Yeah. Run, Lord, for a long time. And sooner or later, God will cut you down. But it's not even that you, know, you could, could I, I, you? yeah. But you know that sense where you you committed this awfulness, yeah, and you think you've moved on or you've 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 shaken it, but it, it, you just you said the word yourself. Its shadow just grows. Yeah, but also he he also there was a moment in it where he realizes that his friend knows he did that, that he saw him knows he did it, and that he forgives him for it. Nearly feels worse. Yeah. Um. You, you know, and yes. he really wants him out of his life because looking at him is looking at the weakest, most cowardly version of himself when yeah. he looks at him. Cause that's the mirror image he gets mm. when looking at this. So he removes him from his life. But again, you, in in this book, your awareness of perspective. I don't think Hassan had a completely different perspective when you when you see get on years later. There was there's a there's a Polaroid captured of him. Now all these years later, and the sense you can see in the um, in this in this photograph that here's a man that feels life has been good to him. Yeah. So there's the irony. Yeah, after all that. So he actually felt life was good to him. Yeah. The other one well, did have the wealthy life. Yeah. Um, amazing. And, yeah. So it, it is. It's an amazing book, but it made me sob. It's, it's very very properly sad. sob. Yeah. It was. It was. It had to go. It was government warning times. <laughs> Wow, like, it should have had a government should warning. Should have had the label on it. Should have had a label. This God. comes with a government warning. I don't, love the government don't warning. This. <laughs> don't read this. With, have have tissues nearby at all time. Yeah. Um, do you and and that that's okay with you? You you didn't kind of put it down and go, God, that was awful. I could never. Or you actually no. found it really quite beautiful and horrific. If you can I make. found it really beautiful, and I found it so honest, and you know, like mistakes made at twelve years old. It's, yeah. It's you know. Um, you know, I'm very interested in, I suppose, morality. And like one of my favorite books I've always said was Crime and Punishment. Yeah. But again, again, he 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 does something for the right reasons. <laughs> Thinks the world would be a better place if he eliminates 
um, you know, the, the landlady that's really, not a really, really unkind person. Um, and, uh, but he can't escape it himself, the deed. You can't, you can't get away, even if the law, if you don't, you can't get away from yourself. You've what de- you've done. You're describing um, about two or three other guests of this podcast who talk about stories that they love about people not being able to escape that moment in their young life. The mayor of yeah. Casterbridge has come up a few yes, times. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know what it is about that. That seems to get under people's skin. Yeah. But it does. And both the stories in some ways that you've we've topped and tailed our chat with today uh, involve... You know the removal of innocence at the age of twelve. Yeah. Um. In 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 you and your first book about Narnia and you being twelve and your own personal story about yeah things changing with the and then we end with the two boys just living the life and then that age again yeah game change and you're just going why why you know yeah it does just there's a, there's a, there's a symmetry there it's interesting strangely, isn't, it? isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. it's all there bubbling away okay uh, we are going to head towards the end of our conversation, which I've really enjoyed. Well, I always do, but so it's been fun. lovely to get an, an insight into who you are. I think people do enjoy seeing a very different side to people like yourself, who they see as a great singer and actor and entertainer and so on. But this is another side to you, which I'm really enjoying. So thank you for being thank so uh, honest and generous with your time. But um, the last question I ask is, and even though we know you've written a book already, an autobiography, mm. the, you have the choice here. Um, uh, whereby I ask you what is the name of the autobiography you haven't written yet that's not to say we're cancelling the one that you have we're simply <laughs> saying maybe things have changed since then or moved on a bit since you wrote it so so you have the choice you want to stick with yours and tell us why you called it that or you can have a brand new one and that's that's on you so the choice is yours Could I do both? Yes of course you can Could I stick with that and then say there's another version? <laughs> okay well tell us about the, the, the actual one for the bare, starters Barefoot Pilgrimage was you know I suppose I after da, after my dad died, um, eighteen years after mum, I I felt you know, obviously deeply sad about a year afterwards, like a profound sadness of them being gone. That nobody will ever look at you in that way. I mean, I only I believe only unconditional love is only parents and children. I don't believe it in 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 relationships because mm. I just think we'd all be complete messes if we loved each other unconditionally. Yeah. You can do that if you like. I still <laughs> love you. No, that won't work. Um, uh, but uh, but when it comes to parents and children, so just to be looked at that way, you never yeah. it'll never happen again. Are you glad you wrote that book? It was a very honest book. You you, you didn't leave much behind. Mm. Um, it was very uh, it was quite raw. Mm. Um, did it did it help you to write that book? Do you yeah. think? Yeah, you're happy with that? I, absolutely. It really yeah. did. Helped a lot of other people, by the way, as well, I think. You know. oh, yeah, I, I believe that. I hope so. It's, yeah. yeah, grief. But I, I, you know, what was beautiful about it, one of the one of the main things was when I did my first draft of it, Yeah. like mum was hardly in it. Yeah. And, you know, I thought to forget the actual presence of somebody, smell, touch, physicality, yeah. them in the room, or you in another room, hearing their voice in another room. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, is uh, that's a real loss, you know. And I only realised it when I'd written that. And then, then, that was the magic of writing it, was that she came back to me in, in the writing of it. You conjured her up. Oh, God, I'm laughing and thinking of yeah. her in, in so many things. Yeah. And it was, that was one of the greatest blessings of doing it, is that I, 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 I got the feeling of what it was like to be in the room with her again. Lovely. Um, and anyway, so yeah, so I felt it was really helpful from my own grief. Yeah. Well, and thing. also I wanted to record it because I thought the whole story is, I found, it wasn't really about it being published, first of all, though of course I was delighted it was. Yeah. Um, but mo- mostly it was because dad had written a memoir, his granddad, his dad had written a memoir. I felt... And I felt aware of my own mortality and going, if I go, this story will die too. So I'll tell the story. Lovely. From my perspective, the obviously. Torch passed on to yes. your generation. You From my perspective. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, and that was that was your autobiography. So you, you, yeah. you, I get the sense you want to give us another another title. <laughs> and then and there's just, this one. Why do you the, want to do it all? The few years later. Yeah, the few years later. That's well, it. you see, now that I don't, now that I'm not so pressed with my mortality at okay. the moment, I think I can just tell the truth, and it's, <laughs> 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 and it's rotten to the core. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> I knew you would. You know I love a good pun. <laughs> yeah. Rotten to the core. That's it. I want to read that the one. The truth. The truth. Rotten to the core. Tales from the back of a church. 
<laughs> Housekeeping. What the? <laughs> Mrs. Beaton. Um, t- rotten to the core. What's it? What? What are you going to put in there? I said, as I said, the truth. No, I'm only joking. It's going to be a dark story. A dark story. I'm, 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 I'm down for that. I'm going to, I'm going to pre-order that today. <laughs> Andrea Cor, what a pleasure to see you in such good form. Thank you. Ryan. And, uh, and, and you seem really happy in the world. I'm good. And you're still reading like crazy, which is great. Yes. And you're just a doubt and a, and a pleasure to see you as always. Thank you for your time. You too, Ryan. So here's this week's Ryan Recommends brought to you by Eaton, Ireland's favourite bookseller. And I'm going to go for some non-fiction this week, The Trading Game by Gary Stevenson. He's a young lad when he was as a boy, didn't come from an awful lot, but got into the whole trading game, saw all the public school boys, all the toffs, all those loads of money types of people, ended up making mega, mega books. Uh, He got out of poverty, into the big money. So what happened next? This is an odyssey. It's an odyssey of greed. It's an odyssey of need with a killer ending. Not the usual kind of thing I'd have gone for, but this really surprised me in a good way. So well worth a look. This book and all the books we discuss on this episode of our podcast are available now in your local Easton store or order them online from Easton's.com before 6 p.m. for same day dispatch with free delivery when you spend over a tenner. Easton, be inspired. 